There are lots of ways that we can provide feedback on other developers' code. A lot of them are subjective, like spacing, function names, and class names. When we do code reviews, these are not helpful methods to provide that feedback, and instead we need a better method. We need to use a non-subjective metric, like lines of code or the complexity of the solution. As a proponent of test-driven development, my favorite metric is code coverage. In this video, we'll discuss what code coverage is, why it's important, and run through how to determine your code coverage with PHPUnit. Hello developers and welcome to the PHP Architect channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Scott Keck Warren, and on this channel we discuss a wide variety of topics related to the PHP ecosystem. Make sure you subscribe so you can get our latest videos when they're published, and make sure you follow me at Scott Keck Warren on phpc.social and Twitter. Automated tests are a critical aspect of maintaining projects in the long term. By integrating test writing into our daily workflow using approaches like test-driven development, we can quickly and confidently make changes to our code base. Test cases make sure that our code is doing what it should, reduces maintenance costs, keeps the code quality high, and ensures we keep our code functional as it changes. We need some kind of metric to make sure that we have enough tests in our code base. Code coverage is this metric. Code coverage is a software testing metric that determines how much of your code is run during your test process. Code coverage is calculated as a percentage by taking the number of lines of code executed by our tests and dividing by the total number of lines times 100. The total number of lines of code part only includes lines that are performed in operations and not declarations in white space. As an example, let's look at this class with a basic constructor and function. The test for this code only checks if the class can be initialized. This is a good first test, but generally gets removed during refactoring as tests are added. In our first named class, we only have two lines of executable code, the assignment operation in the constructor and the strlen call in the length function. All of the other lines are ignored when we calculate code coverage. The tests only call the constructor, so only the assignment operation is covered. We can calculate the coverage by dividing 1 by 2 and timesing it by 100 for 50% code coverage. Now, you might be wondering what a good code coverage number is. Unfortunately, this is one of those annoying questions that have the answer of it depends. There are lots of factors going into what your team thinks is best. The most important thing to remember as you determine your ideal number is that good coverage does not always equal good tests. It's very easy to create a ton of tests in order to get your coverage number up but you'll quickly find that maintaining the test becomes a hassle if they're not done properly. Each team will have to determine what's the best number for them, but generally 75 to 90% coverage is considered good. Less than that, and it's easy to miss bugs, but more than that can make te tests fragile, expensive, and difficult to debug. I like my teams to maintain about 80% code coverage on the application as a whole. To do this, each pull request needs to have at least 80% code coverage to be accepted, and we quickly fix any that are less than that. Some components in our application require more than that and need at least 90% code coverage. I always feel that modules like billing that are mission critical are worth the extra effort. We'll be back with more after this brief word from our sponsor. When you're in production, a thousand things can go wrong. You could deploy a bug in your latest release. Your background jobs can silently fail. Someone could trip over the network cable at your data center, and this all comes back to you. You need to know when bad things happen and be able to respond to them quickly. That's why we built HoneyBadger. It's easy to install HoneyBadger in your back-end applications and front-end JavaScript. It only takes a few minutes of configuration and you'll have monitoring done. That's because we hook into popular web frameworks, job systems, and the browser, so that when any of them crash, we can automatically let you know. We ping your application from our global fleet of servers to let you know about problems with connectivity, latency, and SSL certificates. And we monitor your recurring jobs to see if any of them stop recurring. When there's a problem, we alert your team using the tools you already use. We can create issues in GitHub, Jira, and other issue trackers, and send notifications via Slack, PagerDuty, or other channels. When you click through, you'll be taken to detailed information on the error. You'll see things like request parameters, headers, user information, and the backtrace. Click on any line of the backtrace to view it in GitHub, Bitbucket, or your local editor. 
When you fix a problem, just mark it resolved and follow up with the affected user. That's Honey Badger, where the monitoring tool for web developers who'd rather be, well, developing. Let's work through how we can find the code coverage percentage of your code base. PHP unit provides code coverage support when we install it into our application, but we also need to have either Xdebug or PCUB installed on our system. This is what PHP unit uses to determine which lines are executed as our tests are run. Xdebug is a powerful tool for debugging our code, check back later for a video on how to use it, and is hopefully already installed, so it's an easy win. I also mentioned PCUB because it's faster and uses less memory, which can become very critical when our code base gets larger. PHP unit provides a large number of options for outputting the code coverage. Some like the coverage text or the coverage HTML options are human readable reports of our code coverage. And others like coverage Clover or coverage XML are specifically made for other programs to consume them. Let's try out a couple of options. The coverage text option is a great starting point especially when our code base is small. It's nice because it gives us a overall code coverage numbers as well as a breakdown by file. You'll find that this is less helpful as the code base grows. Let's check our first name and first name test examples from before using the coverage text switch. If you're using xdebug3, you'll need to make sure you specify the mode in the command line. Notice that this verifies our manual calculation before to show us that our code base has 50% code coverage. It also shows which files have how much coverage. If we add a last name class with no tests, we can see how that will affect our percentage as well. As a project grows, it will be helpful to see the coverage in a more user-friendly way. This is where the coverage HTML switch comes in handy. This generates an HTML report of our code base. All we have to do is specify the directory we want it saved to. Opening the index.html file in the directory will display the report. It starts on a page that allows us to browse our code coverage based on file and directory. This helps find whole modules we can improve. Clicking the dashboard link in the top navigation gives us a helpful overview in chart form to find specific problem files. The complexity chart is an excellent option for finding files that need more coverage. The chart shows how much complexity each one of our classes has and what is the test coverage percentage for that file. Files that have high complexity but low code coverage are prime candidates for more tests. Other reports can help you narrow down your focus if you need to increase your code coverage. One of the best pieces of advice I can give you in this video is to make sure that your code coverage is part of your continuous integration pipeline. Your continuous integration pipeline can automatically fail if you don't reach a high enough percentage of coverage. In a future video, we'll discuss how to use a software as a service product to do this. As a recap, code coverage is an indicator of how tested our code is. It's expressed as a percentage. Each team is going to need to pick its own threshold. Make sure you use tools to integrate it into your continuous integration pipeline and pull request process to maximize its usefulness. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, make sure you subscribe, comment, share, and like as it does help others find us. Are there topics you would like to see us cover, or is your team starting to use code coverage as a metric? Let me know in the comments below or send me a message at Scott Keck Warren on phpc.social and Twitter. We would love to hear how we can help you and it always brightens my day when I hear from a fan. This is Scott Keck Warren for the PHP Architect channel signing off and reminding you to keep watching, keep coding, and keep reading.